Hello Leeds United fans, hope you're all doing fantastically well, it is Connor and we are back here with a proactive, a productive video which circulates around the whites going forward. We're back with some energy, wrote that crap at the weekend, we're going to do a little bit more analysis of course, but this is what I love, this is the bread and butter of one Leeds fan channel. It's the rumour mill combined with my expectations, my realistic uh, thought process going forward and I want you guys to engage, I want you guys to interact, I want you guys to give me your thoughts primarily. Now, what are you talking about, Connor? Primary objectives, you're talking productiveness and proactiveness, but that's done. This season has been and gone. Leeds United have fallen through the playoff trap door yet again, the sixth time. Just don't, just any time we're in the playoffs, just write the season off. It doesn't matter anymore. It has to be top two for Leeds United, but we've always known that as Leeds United fans, it's always been the bloody same, right? But what we're doing right now is we are moving on to the second semester, the second turn of Daniel Farker. What do we know logistically? It took him two years in his first stint at Norwich, or 18 months. He came in, there was Nelson or Oliveira, there was James Madison and co. He came, I think Stephen Naismith was even about at that point. He came in second time around, got his players in, relegated Russell Martin to the 23s with a bit of fair fuels, including Wes Hula, and did go down that well. But uh, Daniel Farker was able to put his stamp on things at Norwich City. Now, what are we expecting this season? Well, I'm expecting German reinforcements. I'm expecting Jordan Michaels to almost identify, absolutely identify critical players that can fit into this Leeds United system. And I expect him to have drawn up a list for the past six months, Premier League-wise, Champions League-wise, dossiers, Champions League, Championship-wise. I wish it was Champions League. Maybe one day Leeds United fans. Dossier's database, I want it all to be analysed. I'm sure it all has been analysed. And Leeds United have compiled a list of players. Now, this is exactly what I think needs to happen in this window. Okay, so let's start off with the fundamental basics, youth. Youth has to be utilised much more by Daniel Farker. Now, the encouraging signs here are he's done it before. Jamal Lewis, Ben Godfrey when he first came in, uh, uh, Aaron's. These are all kids. Tom Tribal at the time was young. All these kids that were sort of indoctrinated into that Norwich system, embedded within that Norwich system, were some of the best players in that team. You know, at that, at that standard, you know, Aaron's was a little bit similar to Archie Green. So the Barcelona were looking at him. Jamal Lewis was getting looks from the Premier League. It was a real prosperous and fantastic Norwich City side. The benefit for Norwich is obviously they went up in that second season when those youngsters started coming to the top. But what I will say is Leeds United do have that in their locker. I do still think there's a pathway, especially a championship level in a 4-2-3-1 system for Joe Gelhar. I still believe, and I'd like us to retain his services. I think Joe Gelhar has more than enough to compete championship level. We know his ball skills. We know his ball orientation. We know his football IQ is exceptionally high. We know his balance is low centre of gravity. He can go left, he can go right. He strikes a ball very, very nicely. And invariably, he will actually shoot on goal. I think there's a position for Joe Gelhart in this Leeds United side. Darko JB, there's a conversation there to be had with JB, a very technical footballer. What I want you guys to do is ignore this whole narrative of, well, what's he done this season? What, blah, 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 blah. I understand that plays a part. I get that that plays a part. Of course I do. But you've also got to look at where a player fits into a system. And Darko JB's press resistance. Darko JB's ability on the ball could be very useful, even if it's off the bench in a Leeds United side next season, 100%. We've got to look at Charlie Cresswell. Is he going to be a setback option? If he's not, fine. Get rid early. Get rid early and you utilise Matteo Joseph, Darko JB, Joe Gellar, and if you want, Charlie Cresswell. They have to be utilised more this season. Have to be. Can't be let out in the cold, but also all of these players have the ability and or have shown the ability to do it championship level. So I'd like to see that rotation used a little bit more. Proactiveness anyway, three to four players need to come in. They need to be big players. They need to be big players. And one of those players has to be, has to be a wow signing. A signing where we go, ooh, wow. And I'm talking Ethan Ampadu level. I'm talking when we brought Ampadu with seven million quid from Chelsea, I turned around on many streams and said, I cannot believe we've got him. I cannot believe we've got him. No, Connor, stop overrating him already. Look where we are now. It was unbelievable we managed to get him in. We saw how good he was this season, not just at centre-back at, at points, filling in, but in that midfield. If you can get him back in that midfield with Archie Gray, that is what we need. 
That is the midfield going forward, okay? And then we can utilize Kamara, we can utilize Gref as rotation if we are sticking to the 4 2 3 1 formation. Then you have a proper basis of youth, a foundation of youth, but in there as well, you have quality off the bench at this level. That makes complete sense for me. Now, the three to four signings we can have a discussion about. Get Joe Rodon back. Joe Rodon is likely to be brought back. He's likely to definitely garner interest in the Premier League. We all know that. However, Leeds United are in a very, very good position. Parag has come out and said that we are in a very strong financial position. And I am I am in that belief system that they will go out and get Joe Rodon done. I fully believe that. Now, I've mentioned several times on here, and it's, it's whipped aside. I think a lot of Leeds United fans have a, a little bit of arrogance when it comes to we're bigger than everybody else, so we don't deserve, we shouldn't have these players. And I think that filters down to the loan system as well, where it's like, oh, well, we don't need loans. We're, we're Leeds, we have these players. No, you do need to utilize that system. And another player who I would be looking at 110% is Kipre. Massive fan of Kipre at West Bromwich Albion, 27 years of age, down to, I think it's his last year of his contract. I don't think he's, it, it, it doesn't look like there's any nervous about him signing a new contract. A deal could be done there. The Genk centre back is another one that we've been speaking about. But this is all by the by. There are options there for Leeds United that are affordable, even if you don't like the Genk option and the Kipre option. There are options aside from Joe Rodon, Nathan Wood being another one, Ashley Phillips being another one. Unbelievable at Plymouth on low from Tottenham Hotspur. There are options out there. Okay, so what you do, you get Rodon at the back, push Ethan Ampadu in the midfield. If we can't get Rodon, we do the alternative. Push, push Ethan Ampadu in the midfield next to Archie Gray. That, that early run in the season and Chelsea performance, 100% that has to be the two. 100%. I get, you get so much more balance. You get much, much more technical ability than Kamara and Gruev together. That has to be the two going forward. So you've sorted the most important position without even doing anything properly. You've got that midfield sorted, that the engine room, the IQ, the brain of the operation. Then what you need to do, sort the setbacks out. You're going to get Pascal back. He is going to miss 10 to 12 games probably of the next season. He's been out for a while as well. Match fitness and all this sort of stuff needs to be contextualised here. Is he going to be able to start the next season? We hope so. I, I presume he is. He's had a long time out. Him and Joe Rodon together, I love that. But physicality, a little bit more of a threat from set pieces and a proper person who you can funnel ball playing out from. And I loved as well the development when it came to Joe Rodon over the season with Pascal being out of being that ball-playing defender, of which the responsibility wasn't put on him in the first half of the season. It was all down the Dutchman's side. So then we've got a left-back in junior Firpo. If we can keep hold of Firpo, that's a nice balance. It's a little bit of continuity, and I like that. With Archie moving back into central midfield, you have to go and get a right-back, and it has to be a quality right-back. Don't want to hear Byron. Don't want to hear Byron. Not good enough. Utility rotation player at most, at best. Conor Roberts has gone back fine. He's going to be starting the Burnley at right back with Charlie Taylor. That's going to be their championship campaign. Conor Roberts on one side, Charlie Taylor on the other. Nice little balance for the second tier of English football. You go out and buy a top, top quality right back. We know what's going to be going on in the forward part of the pitch. We absolutely know that it's going to probably be taken apart. It probably is going to be taken apart. But I mentioned that the, the, the two or three big outgoings, I think maybe will consist of probably Nonso, and Somerville. And it'd be nice to see Bamford go out and or Melier. That'd be lovely to see. Worst case scenario, you get a Furpo going out and, 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 and Doomsday, hellish scenario, you get an Archie Gray going out. But I'm going to go with the positive scenario. If you get the two of the wingers out, you're probably doing well when it comes to PSR, the financial constraints. That's all good when it comes to that respect. Apparently, Leeds start to make up 33.7 million of that. Parachute payments is also going to aid that which has been reduced by 18% for this cal- this next upcoming year, which is more than doable, as Parag's come out and said. What we also need to look at is how we develop that, that, that blueprint going forward. I'm going to do a video on the options that I think Leeds have available, but there are more than enough options. Not as good as Crisis Somerville, but there are options out there for Crisis Somerville if he is to move on. Now, we all know there's a Dan James option there as well. I don't think Dan James' technical ability to bring Leeds up the pitch will run that right-hand side. But 14 goals can't be sniffed at. And the impact that he had on the final, which I know it's game state-wise, they were knackered, would bring a really fast kid on. And he's like Dash from the Incredibles. And he's caused them a few problems, but he's brave, he's driven, he's direct. And I like Dan James at this level. At this level, it's perfect for him. And I think even Daniel Farker said, at this level, I, he quoted Dan James has been very, very, very good, or he has been very, very good. But interesting how Farker said, at this level, because he knows what the ceiling is with Dan James. So there is a lot that we can do in that forward line. Now, what we need to do, bring three or four big signings in, as I've just previously mentioned. We've spoken about a right-back, probably Joe Rodon. I'd love a goalkeeper. Melier, 
is is probably sustenance in this division. Now you're looking at the forward line as well. You've got the midfield sorted. You've got that rotation when it comes to Grave and Kamara off the bench. You look at the front line. Do you look at Johnny Rowe? One year left on his deal. Johnny Rowe, Norwich have always been a selling club. They've always been a selling, selling club because they're self-sustainable. Go out and get him. Be aggressive. Be that big club. Johnny Rowe's a replacement. Somerville would be absolutely lovely. Now, another big player. Another big player needs to be your standout signing. Your standout signing going forward. Now, for me, there are sort of three options that I'd be looking at. You've got Morgan Whittaker, who I think will be affordable and he will be an excellent sign and he's someone who can definitely get to that peak of the Premier League. He probably be my third option in terms of this big signing where it's like how have Leeds got him. But the top two for me right now are Cameron Archer and Jack Clark. If you go out and get Cameron Archer and Jack Clark or one of the other and that's your big signing, that is a fantastic acquisition. And people will look at Leeds and go, oh my goodness, what an excellent, excellent addition that really is. I think that's a top addition. If you want to look at maybe Shea Adams in there as well, I think that would be a good signing. Obviously, he's out of contract and the walls are actually going to go in. We're going to do a few free agent signing videos in the next coming days, everybody. But yeah, massive, massive capabilities for Leeds to do really well this season. Three or four big signings coming through the, through the door. Two or three losses. Utilize the loan market if they can. That's why I've left a little bit of a space for maybe a Willie Yon. So, uh, dependent on Jack Clark or Cameron Archer. Utilize that loan signings. I think one or two others as well to sustain that squad depth. And they can be the loan signings as well. You know, we can look at another centre back. We can look at another left back. These are all what the 49ers should be doing. But smart, proper recruitment gets leads back into the Premier League very, very quickly. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you have any suggestions? And I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.